Hey guys, welcome to another- What's up, idiots? <laughs> Alright, no, for real though, um, I was actually, um, I know, but for real- Alright, no, but for real though, um, I- I have what- I'm not as sick anymore, and nobody's home, so I can record this video on why I think Nintendo's doing the right thing with their DLC for Smash Ultimate. Yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of working on this stuff as I go because obviously this isn't my normal type of content But I thought it was fun and I was inspired to write this based on this one post did I did I have that? Anyways, there's this one post that I saw on Twitter that really just come to realize why the, deci the, the decisions they're making and why basically So Smash Bros has been around since like 1999 with Smash 64 and actually Holy shit, why am I just now realizing that Ultimate came out a month before Smash's 20th birthday? Maybe I saw it and I just forgot, but either way, Smash has been part of all of our lives at least some point during our lifetime, probably, maybe. Smash Bros Ultimate being called the Ultimate has been such an amazing experience of visuals, gameplay, and character representation. Dude, this feels weird. I'm like reading from a script and it feels really awkward. Hopefully I can make it look better in post. But anyways, you guys know, Smash Ultimate has every character from every old previous Smash game and all that stuff, and all the special guests like Snake from Brawl and Cloud from Smash 4, you know, all those all those cool kids. But when they first brought in all the old characters again, I got really excited just to see such a stacked lineup back in Smash. This is... This is hard. How do people do this? Just like, how do people just like, talk? I can't... I can't... Mm. The Smash 4 DLC is when they started bringing in the whole DLC scene to Smash, really, and honestly, my first impression of it, I was kind of mad. I was really excited to go back to, like, you know, Melee or, like, Brawl. I, I In Brawl too, right? I don't even remember, honestly, at this point. But you had to, like, go through the story or you, like, you know, play a bunch of games to unlock characters, which I'm really happy they brought back in Ultimate because I really enjoyed just, like, grinding out the game. Like, it gave me more of a reason to play, even though I'd play it either way with all the characters. It gave me, like... A sense of accomplishment when I actually unlock the full roster instead of having the whole roster and then having to pay $4.99 for a new character. So it made me I, I didn't like Smash 4 because of that. I still played I still played the crap out of it, of course. <laughs> but with them bringing the whole DLC scene to Smash, they brought back some old characters like Mewtwo and Roy. I was pretty stoked for it. I didn't buy any of them because I was like I honestly didn't want to pay for it, and they were old characters, but then they brought in, like, new characters like Cloud and some Street Fighter reps, Ryu and Ken. I don't know if they only brought one. I actually don't remember. I should research this stuff, maybe. <laughs> oh, but I was really excited to see some Street Fighter representation because I kind of grew up playing Street Fighter with my brother and cousin. It, it was just, it was just really, it was really cool. And plus, just the depth that you have, the, the depth that, the depth that they add... <coughs> The depth that they add to the characters, the fact that they have true inputs for the Street Fighter characters. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll get into like the, the, the ultimate characters in a bit. We'll, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. But along with all the other characters, I'm not going to go through all of the new ones that they put in. But you get the point. Hey. Smash Ultimate has really been the ultimate in every way. And the DLC has done everything but fall short of the hype for ultimate. So going with the first person that they added to the DLC, we're not even going to talk about that other guy. I'd kind of always known about the Persona series since I grew up in Japan, mostly because I had these two friends that, um, these twins that they played the Persona series like all the time and they talk about it all the time. But like, I kind of wasn't very interested in like JRPGs, I guess, when I was a kid. I was probably most likely playing Wind Waker. Bringing Joker into Smash opened up an, an enormous amount of eyes to the series. Just think about how many streamers were playing Persona 5 before they announced Joker. And like after, well just think about after, because I'm sure there was still a decent amount of people playing Persona 5 when it came out, because it's what, two or three years old? But like, it brought so many people back to the series and so many new people into the series, including me. And a lot of streamers that I watch were also streaming Persona 5, and it was like, it just resurged the game and it, it really just, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I have a script that I should be reading, but I'm not... But yeah, did you know, did you like, did you guys know about Persona 5 before they announced Joker and Smash? Because I didn't know, I, I, I haven't really been keeping up with the series. But, I've been playing the game right now, and it's sick. Like, the stylization, the characters, all, like, all the cool stuff. The way they brought it into Smash really just, like, it, it caught me. It, it, like, it made me really interested in the game, I guess. And I have completely have Smash Ultimate to thank for that. And honestly, I'd say, if you have a PS4... Go pick it up because I picked it up for 20 bucks at Best Buy. But they have Persona 5 Royale as well coming out in 2020 for the Switch. So if you don't have a PS4, don't worry about it. So while Dragon Quest XI Definitive isn't even released yet, the announce of Hero immediately made me look at what game he was from. And like, just the talking about it 
And I don't know, I've been really on a RPG bender this year. I've really wanted to play some more RPGs. Like I played Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga and I had a lot of fun. I got to the very end, but I couldn't beat the final boss. What? 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 Maybe because I was underleveled, or maybe just because I suck. I don't know. And I'm playing Persona 5 again, like I said. And I'm excited for the rest of the stuff that's coming out. I might try and get some more Final Fantasy games. Very excited for Final Fantasy 7. Anyways, Dragon Quest was another series that was also... Well, it's probably the biggest series in Japan, as far as I know. You see it everywhere you go, and I like it just happened to be another one of those things that I kind of took for granted. Because growing up in a different country, it became the only thing I really knew about it so like i didn't know what i had versus what other countries had i i didn't i didn't have an outside perspective because i just grew up around all that stuff i just like go to 7-eleven just thinking oh look there's like a cute blue slime outside of a outside like on the door like a cutout or something or just like you know dragon quest things everywhere it's it, it became just like such a normalized thing for me that i didn't take it in or anything i didn't think twice about it but i guess i wasn't really playing a lot of jrpgs when i lived in japan which what do you what is wrong with you you big baby. Around that time, I think I was usually just playing Pokemon Emerald or RuneScape, honestly. <laughs> OSRS, let's go. So those two games alone are a huge reason why I love what Nintendo's doing with their DLC. They're grabbing these huge like cult followings to games that aren't as popular in the West, and they're putting like hundreds, thousands, millions of eyes on these games that otherwise probably wouldn't get the attention that they deserve, honestly how I feel about it. Without these additions to the game, I probably wouldn't be playing Persona 5 right now, and I wouldn't be looking forward to Dragon Quest, but it's just awesome. So moving on to the next two DLC releases, Banjo was announced a while back and just brought live the other day into the game, and I initially didn't care too much about them because I never played the games as a kid. I only had a few like Japanese cartridges of like Mario Kart and Super Mario 64 and I played like Pokemon Stadium 2 on my Nintendo 64 because I had a, a Japanese one handed down to me from my brother along with some other games too. But the fact that they were able to get back such a beloved character, I, I know that there's a lot of people that love the Banjo-Kazooie series and you know it's talked about there's hundreds and thousands of videos of people like you know and big YouTubers too that always always praise the game and like I just never played it. I might get around to it at some point, but yeah, bringing him back feels like such a, a big accomplishment because at least that's that's kind of what it seems like from the outside, an outside perspective, because I, I guess we don't really know how tough Microsoft was on holding on to Banjo. I'm sure they say it was like, oh, we'd love to have him in, but I, I don't know. E -E 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 -E. You know, just knowing how much of an impact that game made on people and seeing representation from a game that's been dead for like over a decade, at least we don't we don't talk about <laughs> Talk about yeah. that. Even even so, that game is still over 10 years old, I believe. I think 2008 is when it came out. Am I right? Am I right? Google? But bringing him back into a new and fresh game is one of the coolest things that I think I've seen happen with this so far. And along to the new reveal that happened last week or so with Terry from Fatal Fury, I kind of feel the same way about him as I do with Banjo. I never played the game. I never even really heard of it. I might have heard of it in passing because I played... A, okay amount of fighting games and I, I enjoy them regardless i never I don't, I don't really know who he is but seeing people interact on twitter so wholesomely over a character they that they knew from like i saw that the game came out like 16 years ago i think and he's coming back into another fighting game and he's probably going to play relatively the same i mean obviously smash mechanics but like in the same sense that ken and ryu play you can play them as street fighter characters because of true inputs which is really sick and just them them bringing him in and like kind of a resurgence for those people there's now going to be even more people that are going to pick up the game and it just makes me feel like they're doing this right it, it feels right and of course you see people complaining about why terry's in the game why is hero in the game dragon quest even even that big of a game it's like well that's in your perspective that's like that's the reason they're doing it so you can get some eyes on it it's like why are people complaining about like i don't i don't know i think i opened up with this but i said it's because Someone said, why did an SN SNK character get in over someone from Resident Evil or Doom or Ninja... <laughs> My phone autocorrects to Ninja Garden, Ninja Gaiden, and, you know, Overwatch. I feel like that just wouldn't have nearly as much of an impact as the characters that they have chosen. Sure, they might have some cool move sets, or you know, add some unique, weird, some weird uniqueness to the roster or whatever. But seeing the decisions they're making in place of what people, at, like, want 
it feels more worthwhile. It has more, way more of an impact than say, if Tracer was in Overwatch, it's like, okay, so say they replaced, let's just say Joker with a uh, freaking Tracer. Persona's a dead game still today. I wouldn't have known about it. Thousands of people wouldn't have known about it. It's like, everybody knows about Overwatch. Overwatch is like a big current competitive game. There's Overwatch leagues for it. There's competitive play and stuff. It's like, it's constantly getting attention. A Persona, it's like, I didn't know, it I didn't know that game came out. I didn't know anything about it, and I'm sure everybody has heard, at least, or seen Overwatch. Just exposure, dude. I'll pay you an exposure, bruh. So I feel like this approach that they're taking, expanding their game, is not only expanding their own game for the sake of putting, like, overhyped characters, you know, Dante from Devil May Cry or something, you know, that actually wouldn't be too bad. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, that wouldn't be too bad. But you know what? I feel like it doesn't even matter that much anymore because of the announce that they're adding more characters past the first five. After they announced Terry, I was like kind of bummed. I was like, oh man, there's only one more character, but then they announced they're gonna do more. So it's like, well, now there's there's more chances. Instead of putting in like overhyped characters, they're putting in characters that will have meaning, that have an impact. It, and that's just, that's really what I think about it. Also sense. And for my next video, I'll be talking about why Pokemon Sword and Shit.